Cairo, the capital of Egypt, a country with a rich history. When you come here, you can't believe the ancient pyramids are somewhere nearby. There are abandoned architectural monuments among chaotic traffic and piles of trash, and skyscrapers looking exactly the same next to huge street markets. I went to Cairo last year. I was guided through this city by a girl named Olga who has come to live here. Ah, here's Olga waiting for us. Hey there. Hi, I'm Olga. This is Hamza. Olga and Hamza. Yeah. Hi, I'm Vadim. Nice to meet you. Olga decided to show me what I could love Cairo for. Now, you'll see if she succeeded. But before we start, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Soon, I'm going to post a video from Portugal, a former great empire that went through a devastating earthquake, dictatorship, and a massive heroin addiction. Life here is absolutely incredible, you guys. It's dirty, it's noisy, dusty, crowded. The cars are parked all over the place. Nevertheless, the overall vibe here is amazing. So, I wouldn't say that one can fall in love with Cairo. <laughs> At least me. I've been here several times, but I still can't love this place. Olga, on the other hand, is in love with Cairo. To see the non-touristy Cairo, we decided to go to the neighborhood of cheap housing that many students choose for accommodation. There used to be a dedicated bus lane in the middle of this street. You know, like in Istanbul. It was really convenient because you could easily get to places going down this street. But they removed the bus, built a bridge, widened the road, so this is what it looks like now. Now everyone's stuck in traffic jams. Traffic here is a different kind of torture. In terms of traffic jams, Cairo is considered one of the busiest cities in the world. Although it only ranks 41st in TomTom's 21 traffic intensity ranking. Well behind Paris, Jerusalem, Tokyo, and New Delhi. Okay, a question. How safe are the roads here? Look, it depends on how safe you drive, how carefully you drive, how attentive you are about other road users, because actually there are no traffic rules here, so you just drive as you have to. I'll tell you more. I'm about to get my license, and to get a license, you have to prove that you're educated. So you need a certificate that you can read and write. <laughs> That's all you need? Well, yeah, basically. A certificate of education and 100 pounds, that's it. You come to the station, pay 100 pounds, they ask you, do you know how to drive? You say, yes. And he's like, okay, great, and signs your papers. All right, so we are in a poorer neighborhood. This is where subway construction workers used to live. Pyramid builders, basically, the new ones. Around 60 years ago, when they started developing the subway, they would accommodate builders here. So it was supposed to be temporary housing. But as time passed, people settled down here. By the way, a lot of houses here are rented under the so-called old rent law. It's like when you signed a rental contract a thousand years ago at a price of five pounds, and you still can't terminate it. Oh, just like in New York. So you still pay five pounds for your rent, and your kids can rent this apartment as well. I mean, you can pass the contract down to your children, but the houses are beat down. All the houses are built like this. There's a reinforced concrete structure and it's lined with bricks. In Cairo, there are a lot of houses with utility systems outside the building. That's because there was no running water or sewage in the houses of the past. That's why when civilization arrived here, they started adding facilities on the walls of buildings. People got used to doing it this way. So now, even in new houses, they often don't hide pipes in the walls. It looks strange, but on the other hand, maintenance is cheaper. So, uh, this is some street food? Yeah. The fruits look great. And these carrots. These carrots are perfect. And all this stuff is very cheap. The kids are also nice, the ones playing over there. Hey, kids! Building design in Cairo is compact for this reason. It's really costly and time-consuming to beautify the area, to plant all these trees, etc. 
That's why once it's done in a neighborhood, they're trying to put as many buildings there as possible. Because Cairo is basically a desert. All the greens are in the Nile Delta. Everything else is a desert. And it's really hard to beautify a desert, you know? That's why they put up as much housing as they can. What's more, a lot of people add illegal floors above the roof. A lot of tourists ask, why is there a roof reinforcement sticking out? And tour guides tend to say, well, that's because they pay less taxes if their house is unfinished. But that's not the case. In fact, they leave the construction there to fill it with concrete and build another floor on top of it. So that's what happens here. That's why rebar is sticking out. It's nothing to do with taxes because you pay tax just one time when purchasing the apartment, both for land and for the house. Look, what are they doing? So she puts some cash in a basket, lowers it down, then he takes the money, puts groceries in the basket, and she lifts it up. That's food delivery. Houses like this don't have an elevator. It's difficult to go all the way down, then back up. So this is the solution they came up with. All right, so besides trash cans and parking, there's also billiard tables in the yard here. That's uh, unexpected. Billiard tables among all this trash and all these cars. Look how everything's just broken here. It's so messy. And then suddenly, billiard tables. <laughs> that must be the influence of the British. <laughs> it's just a pity we didn't bring any cues. By the way, if you like this video, please share it on Reddit. That'd really help this channel grow. What? Hey, looks good. So, recently, the government has hired a private company to clean the streets. They got a huge grant, of course, they embezzled the grant, and for a while they were actually cleaning the streets. But it didn't last long. They used metal bins that were all stolen because they were metal. And yeah, it all came to an end. So now you'll rarely see public services cleaning the streets here. They're underpaid. And although they work for the government, there's still the private contractor who doesn't provide pensions or any other benefits to them. So they're not really motivated. And people who don't understand that life can be different throw all this trash in the street and the streets look awful, just like this. Unfortunately, this issue won't be resolved unless there are strict measures like huge fines for littering. And it should be done in a way that people can't get away with it. That's really the only way. Once again, it's caused by poor education. People just don't see that there's a problem here. Around 90% of the locals have never been abroad. Of course they don't understand this isn't normal. For them, it's something that they're used to. That's the way they grew up. It's the way they were brought up, unfortunately. In a city constantly stuck in a traffic jam, a city that makes you stressed, you can't relax here. You just can't enjoy yourself here because people give you looks. They're annoyed by your camera. They're, they're annoyed by you. Cars are honking, cutting you off. There are no sidewalks. There's dirt. I, I mean, I, I just feel constantly stressed here. You have to stay focused to survive. But some people love it, to each his own, I guess. This is a regular residential area of Cairo. ACs and pipes hanging outside the houses, water pipes, sewerage, and stuff like this. Cars parked all over the street. You can't go anywhere, there are cars everywhere. Here is what could be called a courtyard. But, of course, it's not really a courtyard. It's packed. It's all packed. I asked Olga why she decided to move to Cairo and what life is like here for women. So while we're in the car, tell me, how, um, how are you here? Well, I got married here to him. My husband is half Mexican, half Egyptian. He was born in Mexico, lived there for 16 or 17 years, and then moved to Egypt, because his father's from Egypt, and I am from Belarus. I studied in Poland for six years, because after the Jeans Revolution in 2006, I was expelled from the university. Then I went to Poland, studied at the Jagiellonian University there. Then I came back to Belarus. I was a bit nostalgic then, you know. In 2010, I went to jail for a day again. Yeah, I, I was very lucky. And since in Poland I converted to Islam, I found it difficult to be my true self in Belarus. So I moved to Kiev, lived there for two years, and then I met my husband. 
moved to Cairo, and since 2015, I've been living here. It took me a long time to get used to this place, because you see for yourself what kind of city it is. But then I went through all the stages, from depression and denial to absolute love. Now I love Cairo. I love Egyptians. I'll never move away from here. I feel so good here. First of all, I had children here. I also have another son. And Egyptian people love children. In general, Egyptian people are very kind and sweet, and when you start looking into the political and social issues here, you understand why the situation is like this here. All this corruption, these roads, these dirty streets. In principle, people here are the victims of circumstances, unfortunately. Here it doesn't matter what color your skin is, what language you speak, how you behave, if you have an accent or not. My husband still has an accent in Arabic. Okay, but you're sitting in the front seat, unfastened with a baby on your lap. This is probably going to raise some questions, especially since we're not somewhere in Germany, you know, we're in Cairo, and the roads aren't very safe here. No, actually, I usually fasten seatbelts when I'm in the front seat, but we never use car seats for children. Why? Look, I mainly get around by taxi because my husband is always at work and I don't have my driving license yet. And there are no taxis with baby seats in Cairo. Moreover, if you put your child in a baby seat, people look at you like you're an alien. Like, what is that? But, but you told me they love children here. You know, it's more about, and that fate is given to one by Allah and Allah only. If your fate is to die, you'll die anyways. Oh, so it's all God's plan. I see. So if you die, you die. That's some flawed logic, but okay. It's shocking that in a city as big as Cairo, they failed to create efficient systems of public transport. There is a subway here, but the network isn't developed enough. Just three lines for a city with a population of 10 million. Before 2014, there was a tram in Cairo, but it was successfully removed. Even earlier, in 1971, they got rid of a trolley bus. The only other transport you'll find here is vans with unlisted routes. People say you can survive here without a car, but it's really hard. Public transport is really the worst here. It makes me cry, honestly. I tried taking buses here, but it didn't really work out. Because you can be waiting for a bus for an hour and a half and it never arrives. So eventually you have to take a van. And vans are dangerous. It's often the case that van drivers smoke hash. I'm not kidding. They smoke hash while they're working. Once my husband and I were going to get our documents. And the driver, together with the guy who collects money and invites people at the stops, they were discussing how they smoked so much hash the other night, out loud. They weren't embarrassed at all. All right, so Olga, tell us how you eat with this. Oh, I take this thing. It goes up. Well, most women just lift it a bit and eat like this. But I wear a niqab not for religious reasons, but just because I feel more comfortable like this in Cairo. This way I don't attract attention. Oh, so you're literally undercover. Yeah. Recently in Egypt, there have been a lot of initiatives, including actual laws that are aimed at protecting women's rights. For example, violence survivors who testify in court are guaranteed anonymity. You know, due to local culture, many women choose not to report violence, scared of public condemnation and stuff like that. Now they're legally guaranteed anonymity. The domestic violence law hasn't been adopted, but there are a lot of talks about it right now. Also in the parliament, they want to adopt a law about domestic violence, meaning violence to a wife, uh, to a daughter, uh, I don't know, to a mother. Because the problem of domestic violence in Egypt is very serious. Although women's rights are protected by the law at quite a good level. For example, in case of a divorce, a woman who can hire a lawyer and go to court can literally leave her ex-husband without his last pair of pants. And that's because of all the payments and so on. And contrary to popular opinion that in Egypt kids stay with their father after divorce, they actually stay with their mother until she remarries. When she remarries, children go to their father. Here, they have this thing. Divorce initiated by wife, but due to the husband's fault. So if your husband mistreats you, you can report him and go to court. Then they will let you divorce him. This is when the wife will ask for a divorce because she just can't live with her husband anymore due to some issues with him. In this case, a man should not only pay her compensation for divorce, but also compensation for moral damage, up to 24,000 pounds a year, for eight years of living together. 
it adds up to quite a large sum. So if a man divorces a woman who's angry at him, then he can actually be left without a penny. Like any other eastern city, you can't imagine Cairo without bazaars. Street trading is so dense here that sometimes whole quarters turn into one big bazaar. What's going on here? What are they lining up for? For bread! What a fancy market we got here! People are waiting to enter this bakery to get some bread. They get it for free. It's subsidized. This is subsidized bread? Yeah, and maybe it's better not to film them. You have turkeys? Right here. Oh, wow. Wow, what an awesome cage. That's a cage full of chickens. Oh my god, they have rabbits here. Holy cow. There are also pigeons here, because we eat pigeon. Look here, rabbit. Uh, now listen, those rabbits are for eating, right? So they'll be eaten today? Probably. All right, so here we have rabbits and here pigeons. But why aren't they flying away? They got to be tamed, I'd think. They're raised for food. Pigeons, ducks, and turkeys. You can buy them all in this courtyard. Look, they sell bunnies here. All these bunnies are going to get eaten. They're meat rabbits. Then there are pigeons, also to become food, and one more bunny's just hanging out with them. It's also here that I became the victim of a street scam by a boy selling glasses. Sir. All right, so this dude was selling glasses, but it didn't go well for him. He tripped and broke all of his glasses. Oh, he looks sad. Should we, uh, should we help him? Should we buy those glasses that he broke? Oh, he's got to be the saddest person in Egypt now. But it turned out this was all staged to con me out of 100 Egyptian pounds. It's around $7. So... Our kind hearts have just been scammed. So this dude falls on purpose. He makes it seem like he broke his glasses on purpose. He makes the saddest face in the world and people give him their money when they cost nothing. Were we tricked? Well, we were tricked, but we paid him for a good performance. What a talented actor. For me to get a better impression of Cairo, we went to the best neighborhood of the city, Heliopolis. It was built at the beginning of the 20th century by Europeans, in particular by a company of Belgian entrepreneur Edouard M. Payne. Europeans brought with them wide avenues and trams, not common for the Arab East. The main outcome for their work was that Heliopolis got its own architectural style, the Heliopolis style. This is basically a synthesis of Moorish and Persian revival and European neoclassical architecture styles. This place is called Heliopolis, and this part is Korba. I don't know where this name comes from, but the district is called Heliopolis, which means rising sun, because it was supposed to accommodate the Egyptian and British elites. There should have been these villas and beautiful buildings with carved balconies here. But as time went on, there appeared more modern buildings. So now we have what we have. Let's take a look at the beautiful new Egyptian architecture. You can immediately see, yeah, this is where heirs of the great culture live. Yep. And now they build crap like this. It's really beautiful. I love walking around here. You get the city vibe here. Moreover, there are still some coffee shops here that have been preserved since the time when my father-in-law was a young man and would hang out here with his friends. All these places are still here, most of them. It's true, there are a lot of historical buildings in this neighborhood. And yes, they are messed up with all those ACs, annexes, outbuildings, all this junk. But you still enjoy walking next to this beauty, to all this history. It's still one of the best, most interesting areas in Cairo. This is the street cleaner. That's why it's so dirty here. Instead of cleaning, he's just sitting there reading a newspaper. Hello. It's all clear to me now. And this is the entrance? Yeah. It looks simple. Yeah, the architecture of Heliopolis is truly amazing. Everything is so fancy. I'd say Heliopolis is like the Beverly Hills of the beginning of the last century. It was a Belgian project designed by French architects. 
And in those days, at the beginning of the 20th century, it was a really magical city. It used to be a suburb of Cairo. Now it's part of the city. It used to be a suburb. People used to have running water, electricity, there were wide avenues here, and even a tram. Now there's no tram. Now there's no tram and almost no magic. It's becoming less and less magical because, you see, new things are being built and historical buildings are in poor condition. But the main thing that used to amaze and still amazes people is this extraordinary, magical style. This is how Europeans used to think of an oriental fairy tale a hundred years ago. It's a mixture of Arab and Persian styles with something French. It's an amazing place, an amazing place that has been preserved until our time. Unfortunately, not in the exact condition that we would want to see it in. And no tram. They got rid of the tram. In Cairo, almost nobody uses sidewalks because they're just endless assault courses. So people just walk on the road. Here's a dude collecting cans. I wonder how much you can earn by collecting cans. And it's quite common here to seize parking lots like this. Look, they put tires and things like that to take over a parking lot. And this. This is where parking attendants are sitting. No, this is where Bawab is sitting. Does that mean parking attendant? No, Bawab works for this building. He's like a doorman, and he comes to work here. Yes, he can also be responsible for the parking. It'll be extra money for him. Is he like a street cleaner? Yeah, he cleans the common areas. He can do small chores for you as well. So you can ask this guy to get you something from a shop? But personally, I use my Bawab to go print something for me. I see, so he prints it. And this is a squat, a true Cairo squat. Get a glance at it now. They're already angry at us. Hey there. I can see some cats there. Hello. We're just walking around here. No need to worry. Can we enter this house? She said it's not hers, so we actually can't. So people live in these tents here. Yes, I'll tell you more. If there's a construction site here, especially in Tagamo, where they build a lot of new houses, and people construct temporary houses made of empty boxes or something, they live there. It can be a family of five living in a shack like this. Moreover, some of them put their own wires on the existing ones. So they have a flat screen TV where they live, and they can watch TV. They have washing machines. In the area where I live, in a foundation pit of a demolished house, there's a tent where people have TV, a washing machine, and even a computer. Ooh, what a cool way to protect this electrical box. Oh no, it's made to prevent you from climbing over the fence. And look at this one. It's funny how the box is totally plundered. And here's this tunnel made of barbed wire. It's also funny that when you come out of the underpass, you still have to run across the road. Uh, that's because the underpass throws you into the middle of a road junction, and the people are forced to run across the roads. And then there's this minibus driver inviting people for a ride. This is the tram that used to run through here. This monument's all that's left of this old system. Recently, I was at a supermarket near my house when a man came in with his son. The son had Down syndrome. The shopkeeper was incredibly friendly with him. He initiated a conversation, uh, hugged him, patted him on the shoulder. Their sincerity really inspired me, just like their hospitality. We will now take a subway to Cairo's largest district, where poor people live in old historical buildings. It's only on the way to your hotel, so it's quite nearby. Yeah! Oh, is he gonna let us go? No, he won't! Oh, this one will. Oh, no, he won't. Look at him! They never let you cross the road. No matter whether you're carrying a stroller or not, a woman will never give way to you. Why? I don't know. So if you're crossing the road with a stroller, the car will hit you? Yeah, I mean, it's just not gonna stop. And I don't understand why. No female solidarity whatsoever. Oh, so only a woman's gonna hit you? Or anyone? Only a woman. The men will give way to you, no problem. 
In the metro, I always sit in the men's section because I'm always given a seat there, every time. Ah, there's different sections. Let's go take a look. And we're going down to the subway. All right, here's the thing, guys. We're now going down to a special, strategic, secret facility called a subway, where filming is apparently forbidden. Let's see what they do to us. Olga says that it'll be a nightmare. They won't let us out of here. But, oh well, let's see. Olga makes it sound really terrifying. In many countries, filming in the subway is prohibited, allegedly to prevent terrorism, especially in the Eastern Muslim countries. Egypt is no exception. The subway here is quite boring, to be honest. Reminds me of the Istanbul metro. Let's see what the carriages look like. This is what the ticket's like. And this is the train. They don't announce the stations here, only a sound signal. See, it says women's carriage. This is where the women's carriage stops. The Cairo subway has separate carriages for women. Women and teenagers up to 18 years old can ride in women's carriages. In men's carriages, anyone can ride. That's called discrimination. After a ride in the Cairo subway, we return to the city. What's this? He says filming's not allowed. I asked him why, and he said, just because. But what's he selling? He says, I won't tell you. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, but they have an amazing staircase, look. He says these are air fresheners. Basically, the guy's selling something secret in those bottles. I think he's either selling oil or gasoline or some other liquid. It's definitely something inedible. It's starting to get incredibly beautiful here. Who would have thought that after half a day of walking around some fancy districts, Olga would finally take me to a decent place? Oh, how wonderful! Look! We finally arrived to the real, breathtaking Cairo. Finally, the famous narrow streets with the aroma of coffee in the air, or maybe not coffee, but <laughs> definitely some very unusual scents. Oh, I'm trying to recall the oriental tales where they burn incense? Right, the burning of the incense. Hey there. Look at these clothes drying outside. Wonderful. So nice. The old dark houses entrances. Someone parked a bike on the stairs. It's wonderful. Many people wonder why Cairo is so gray. The reason is that it almost never rains here. There's little rain, but a lot of sand. Sandstorms happen two to three times every spring. Plus, it's always dusty here. And this is where the buildings got their brown color from. Oh, look at these beautiful streets. And here's a flooding. Why does it all get flooded, by the way? There are no gutters, so every little rain is always a disaster for Cairo. Everything gets flooded, school and kindergarten classes get canceled simply because you can't get anywhere. Last year, we had such a big traffic jam that people were stuck in it until 3 a.m. All right, now how do you guys like this part of Cairo, eh? What an incredible mix! Some carts with donkeys, cats, children, a guy selling hairbrushes on his head, some people are cycling, and all this is mixed up on one street. It's incredible! Let's take a look at the urban environment. I guess this is supposed to be a bus stop. This is how you cross the road here. Random trash, because we're in Cairo. These are public spaces. This is a sad guy. He's probably on drugs. Here we have the skin of a dead dog or sheep. And here's a mosque. Everything is close by, and I hope that bus doesn't hit us! They sell delicious oranges right on the side of the road. Wow, they look amazing. Oh, the scent coming from the bakery is unbelievable, guys. If only you could smell it. An incredible concentration of all kinds of things in one place. Oh, my brain is going crazy because it's not used to such a mix of emotions that you get here. Uh, so many different characters and scents. It's incredibly interesting. It's critical to have the right attitude. I often hear from people that Egypt is so dirty and messy. 
They won't go here, won't go there. Look, you got to learn to see the good in this mess. So you may just be casually walking by, and then all of a sudden you see this ancient building in the middle of a mess. Look at this wonderful door leading upstairs. It's probably Aladdin's house. With all this decor and ancient detail, with this thousand-year-old beam on which cats now lie. And trash, of course. And suddenly there's a workshop in the corner. Strange, rickety buildings. You look up and see beautiful balconies. Children are running, wonderful. Hello, children. Hello, hello. Hi. And now look at this incredible, glamorous camel. This guy's making a hookah. Hey there. Now that's something unique, a fence to prevent people from running across the road. Oh, there used to be an overhead passage, which apparently led to the other side, judging by these ruins. It was either demolished or it collapsed on its own. And now people just walk on the side of the road lost. Do we have to climb over the fence? Oh, it's not that easy. <laughs> it's quite a challenge to cross the road. I'm not sure if you know, but Egypt is literally a state within a state. There's the military that practically runs the country because the new president is a military officer. There's a military budget that's not subject to any checks or audits. As a result, the military people live very prosperously. They have their own hospitals and even their own roads. In Alexandria, there's a separate road for the military. Obviously, it's of excellent quality. It's perfect. They actually have their own road? Yes. Moreover, our taxes are used to replenish the military budget, among other sources. For example, we're now on our way to Nasir City, where most of the land belongs to military people. As such, when you buy a flat in the building that's located on this land, the property tax that you pay will go to the military budget instead of the state budget. At the same time, there's no social schemes, no child benefits, nothing of the kind. There are only food vouchers for the poorest, which lets you get items such as rice or milk. But there's very little of that, and it's not enough for the people. 40% of Egypt's population lives below the poverty line. Some families, sometimes up to 10 people, live on $4 a day. This is how people without cars survive. The buses are on the right and busy traffic on the left. And you gotta squeeze through the cars and the people because there's just no sidewalks here whatsoever. Although I have to say they're building a new embankment, but it's closed at the moment so we can't get there. The state of Cairo's public transport and traffic in general is just catastrophic. There aren't many cities in the world with traffic like this. It doesn't make sense how such a large city can lack decent public transport, proper sidewalks, or other aspects of a developed urban environment. How do people live in this chaos of humming cars and the need to constantly survive? It's insane, really. If you don't have a car in Cairo, you'll struggle. But if you do have a car, it won't be much easier because there are huge traffic jams. That happens because everyone is forced to buy a car. Also, people drive very badly here. Many either don't have driver's licenses or get them illegally without any knowledge and exams. As a result, there's this total chaos on the roads. By the way, the Nile doesn't look so wide from here. However, it's only at this place because here it branches into two rivers. In front of me is an island, and behind that island is the second branch of the Nile. Look, they're reconstructing the embarkment. Hopefully in a couple of years, there's going to be a nice promenade along the Nile. Uh, for now, it's all closed for construction. The saddest part is that there's no clear way to walk here now. There's no alternative route, and people are forced to walk on the main road. 
The buses just stop in the middle of the bridge to drop people off. Look, it stops here and the people just get out on the road. The challenge now is to somehow cross the road. It's not an easy task. Oh man, f Oh, so how do I cross the road? All right, let's just start walking. I'm walking carefully and uh, done. And now from this side, all right, go, 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 go. Oh, that's it. And straight into the beauty of Cairo, if I can call it that. A market under the bridge. As you can see, you can buy anything here, any kind of rags, food, or livestock. And this is where the street begins, right under the overpass. On this side are the last rays of the setting sun. And here, along the overpass, it's a beautiful market. One of Cairo's biggest problems is that its government tried to solve the issue of traffic jams by building massive overpasses. As you can see, these overpasses are just a few meters away from people's windows. They reach the level of the third or fourth floor, and that's how it looks from above. Obviously, this didn't solve the traffic issues because the overpasses are now full of traffic jams. Actually, filming in Cairo is pretty manageable. You're just not allowed to film the military, police, and security forces in civilian clothes. Apart from that, the people are very friendly and react positively to the camera. If you're open and friendly, you'll get the same attitude in return. I'm amazed by how densely built up Cairo is. The windows are literally facing each other. It's a very overpopulated city. If you look at the rooftops, you'll see that many of them have pigeon houses. Pigeons are not only valuable here for their fur, but also for their meat. People eat pigeons here on festive days, and it's considered a delicacy. So if you come to Cairo, be sure to order a pigeon in a restaurant. Oh, look at these magnificent views. Old Cairo and New Cairo. The old houses and narrow streets are slowly disappearing, making way for the skyscrapers and blurring the line between Cairo, Dubai, or China with their similar-looking chain hotels. You know, in my opinion, all these narrow streets are so much more impressive than soulless glass skyscrapers. So here ends the old quarter. And immediately we see the skyscrapers. After touring the city, we headed to the restaurant. And it was there that I was told about this dish that supposedly increases potency. All right, Olga, what can you tell me about pigeon? Pigeons are a traditional delicacy, and it's believed that they improve male potency. No clue why they assume so, but oh well. Let's ask Shadi. Hey, do pigeons improve male potency? Yes, it's true. And they're very delicious. How much is a pigeon? To buy one? Yeah, for them to cook one. I see it's stuffed with something. Yes, it's stuffed with rice and seasoning and oil fried. They cost around $4 per pigeon. Guys, this is absolutely unbelievable. We're walking around, minding our business, and all of a sudden, there's a flock of sheep. Just look how amazing Cairo is. Only in Cairo can you be crossing a busy road and bump into a herd of sheep. I can't believe it. I like the music here. Oh, they're all yours. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> the ram is stealing his lunch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks to us, the rams can finally have a proper meal. Or are they sheep? No, they're rams.
Well, urban planning isn't perfect here. No sidewalks. You just have to walk around the cars. The people are either walking on the road, driving on the road, or selling on the road. The rams are here too. There's also a donkey. It's a very lively atmosphere. So this is the Cairo you love. Actually, yes, me too. I really like this city. There are a lot of old buildings and picturesque markets here. Although it's a pity that architectural monuments, streets and traffic is not as organized as it should be. If you liked my trip to Cairo, subscribe to the channel and give it a like. Also, share this video on Reddit so that more people can find it.